and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a new exception handling feature found inside of Power Automate Desktop called On Block Error. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So Microsoft recently released a new exception handling capability called On Block Error. Now this is found inside of the November 2020 release of Power Automate Desktop or what's known as PAD. So if you can't find this specific feature, then you'll know that you're probably running on an older version. So really that could be either the September release, which happened at Ignite, or there was also an incremental release in October where PAD was updated. So go ahead, get the latest, then you'll be able to go ahead and use this feature itself. Now, what makes this difference different compared to like previous approaches is that before we had the ability to configure exception handlers, but it was on a per action basis which meant that we would have to touch each specific action and then determine what we wanted to do when something occurs. Now what we can essentially do is much like a scope shape inside of Power Automate's API flows, we can go ahead and create a block and then add all of our actions inside of that block. And then what'll happen is when an exception occurs inside of that block, we can configure a common exception handler. Now in this case, that's typically gonna be in the form of a subflow where we can go ahead and centralize all of that exception handling logic and then go ahead and write to a log file, write to a database, call a logging API, whatever makes the most sense for you, but now you can centralize that logic and not have to deal with this at such a granular level itself. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Okay, we'll see a little bit of this in the demo itself, but where do you find this new action? So you'd find it in the actions panel on the left-hand side, go ahead and search for on block. Then you'll go ahead and you'll see this new entry. So if you can't find this, once again, you're probably running an old version of pad. Go ahead, drag it onto your canvas. And then what you'll see here is this purple block. And what we can go ahead and do is add new actions into this specific block. And then if we go ahead and double click on on block error, what we see is this configuration experience here, where we can then configure different rules on how we want to be able to handle an exception itself. Now, in this case, what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to run a subflow. In this case, it's called exception underscore handler. That's something I've created myself, and that's where I can centralize all of that, that logic that I want to execute whenever there is an exception thrown. So let's go ahead, let's see this in action and get right into the demo. Okay, here we are inside of Power Automate Desktop. Let's go ahead and go through this in more detail itself. Now something I have done just to add a little bit more verbosity to my error messages is I have established a, a local variable here and I'm just calling it error location. And all I wanna be able to do is to update it to the location where I'm currently at. And I could also include additional details as well. Um, but this is something that we can actually leverage inside of our centralized exception handler, which I'm gonna show you here shortly. Now what we've got going here is the on block error that I described in the slides. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch just an application. This is just the legacy application that's provided as part of RPA in a day. And what I'm gonna do is once I launch this, I'm gonna display a message. And there's a specific reason for this. I want this to fail. And so what I'm gonna do is, and that's why I have a display message to essentially pause execution, is when this runs, I will launch the application and then I'm gonna close it down. Once I've closed it down, I can click on the display message, which will then go and advances to the next step. Now the next step is gonna to try to get the window for my legacy application here. But naturally, 
it's not going to be able to find it. It's going to fail. So we fully expect that on this specific step that we are going to have a failure itself. And that's exactly what we want to happen because we want this block to then go ahead and call out to our exception handler itself. And so that's what's pretty important for us as well. Now, if we head over to our exception handler, this is a new subflow. So I went in here and I basically went and said, you know, create a new subflow. And all I'm doing here is I'm gonna just go ahead and display a message. Naturally, you wouldn't do this in production. This is just for illustrative purposes. What I am going to do is I'm going to just, you know, pop up a message box just to prove that this is actually being called. And uh, I'll have to acknowledge it by clicking on the OK button. But this is where you would go ahead and typically centralize your logic and make that API call, make that database call, whatever makes the most sense for you. So let's go ahead, let's run this and we'll see this in action. Okay, so what we've got is the Contoso app has been launched. The get window command is going to be looking for this specific window. So this is why I'm gonna close it down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click this okay button. Now what's gonna happen is this get window action is going to be trying to find this window, but it's not gonna be able to go ahead and to do so. Now I did have a timeout of 15 seconds associated to this command. It's a configurable value and really kind of depends on, you know, your use cases and typically what's involved in that. Now what's happened here is the 15 seconds have expired and we've now called our exception handler, our subflow. And here's where we've got information about an exception has occurred. We couldn't get the window for app itself, which is great. That's, that's exactly what we wanted to go ahead and have happen. Now let's go ahead and this will also works when we go ahead and call this from an API flow, which is typically mm -hmm. how we would go ahead and run this. So here I've got an API flow, it's quite simple, and I'm going to just manually trigger this call, and then we're gonna go ahead and call my error handling pad process, which uh, I've previously shown you folks, and we're gonna run this in attended mode. So let's go ahead, let's click on test, and we will let this run, and we'll still see the behavior of the exception details being passed to our API flow, and so it's one of those things where even though we're configuring this exception handler, that feedback is still making its way back to API flows, which is super important because naturally this is the, the place where we're gonna orchestrate all of our automation processes. Okay, so we can see pad has now launched and we have our screen and we've got our display message. Let's go ahead, let's close this. Let's now click okay. We do see we've got our exception handler has been called. We've displayed our message. And sure enough, our API flow has received the signal that we have a failure, right? And in this case, this is gonna be the message from pad itself. This isn't the configurable message that I've configured inside of my exception handler, but this is the actual details that were thrown back from the action that itself failed. All right, so that concludes this demo. Hopefully you found this useful. I think this is a, a great step forward in terms of even more robust exception handling capabilities. And this is something that you should certainly be using whenever you're building any of your processes inside of PAD, where you do want to be able to centralize some of that logic and have consistent exception handling and not have to deal with it on a per action basis, but being able to logically group related actions together, and then even providing some level of customization around uh, you know, the, how you wanna deal with those specific exceptions, because naturally exceptions are always going to be managed differently depending upon what you're trying to do or the types of applications that you're trying to automate itself. So thanks for checking out this episode. If you are not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Naturally, you're watching this on YouTube. 
Likes are always appreciated. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do post weekly on topics related to the Power Platform. So that would be great if you would uh, join me on this journey. Thanks, and we'll see you again. Take care.